Hey guys. Today I'm going to be doing an updated propagation box video. This is long overdue. It's been well over a year since I did my first propagation box and I've come a long way in my system and how I do things. So I thought this would be helpful for some of you and I will also be talking about some of the most frequently asked questions in terms of propagation boxes as I show you how I do them. So yeah, you're just gonna need a few things, of course, for your propagation box. Number one, of course, you're gonna need a box. I have a little one here. I use little ones, I use giant ones. I also have like eh, medium-sized ones. And my favorite boxes to use are the ones with clear lids, but not all of my, oh, you can't even see them. Not all of my boxes have clear lids, so it's not like super important. It's just kind of helpful. So clear lid ones are a little bit harder to find though, it seems like. So <laughs> any lid is fine. And then you're also going to need some plastic cups, something to burn holes into the bottom of plastic cups, and then also sphagnum moss, of course, and plants to pot into the sphagnum moss, and then some sort of liquid fertilizer. Of course, I prefer Liquidirt. 10 out of 10 recommend. It's the number one plant product I recommend for people. I think it's well worth the money, and it goes a really long way. I know it's kind of expensive outright, but I've had mine for a year and a half now, my pouch for a year and a half now. Still have half of it left, and it really does go a long way, so that's why I recommend it. I do have a code for 25% off if you would like to try liquid or dirt out. It is Harley G underscore 25. Um, is that it? I can't quite remember, so I'll put it on screen, but I do definitely recommend it. So, um, yeah. Okay. Let's get started. Okay. So, man, what do I want to do? First I use, you got to burn some holes into the bottom of plastic cups. Oh, you got to burn some holes into the bottom of plastic cups. These are five ounce cups. These are three ounce cups. So just depending on the size of the cutting I'm taking, depends on which size cup they'll go in. I do use the three ounce cups most because I do propagate mostly by like single node unrooted. But if like it's a cutting that I have sitting in water, which I have some of those today that have formed roots, I'll go ahead and put them in the five ounce cups. Anyway, then you're just going to want to use, um, I think it's called a soldering iron. I don't know tools. Is that what it's called? Soldering iron. And Ryan will actually burn two holes into the bottom of each cup for me. I don't do it because, you know, fumes, burning plastic fumes aren't healthy, <laughs> especially when you're pregnant. Okay. So yeah, just go ahead and burn two holes into the bottom of each cup. Really easy. Then of course you're going to need your sphagnum moss. So here I have my bucket of sphagnum moss, which is extremely dry, but it is the New Zealand best grow sphagnum. This is my favorite kind. The kind I recommend, I will have it linked down below. It is the best in my opinion. Yeah. And this is extremely dry. So I'm going to go ahead and dampen it up here. I have some water with liquid or Probably gonna need more than this. Oh look, there's a plant growing in here, how cute. Let's see what that turns into. Just plop it right there. Ugh, I'm not strong enough for this. Add some more water so it's all damp. And you just want it damp. You don't really want it like wet, wet, especially if you're taking fresh cuttings. I'm really bad at taking cuttings and letting them harden, but you should definitely let them like harden off after you take the cuttings. Just like let them sit in open air for a couple of hours. But I'm kind of at a point in my life where I don't have much time. So like when I, when I get the thought to do something, I just like got to do it and get it done. Otherwise it's not going to get done. Now, this is about how damp you will want it. Let me show you up close. I do also actually have some perlite mixed into here, but I don't actually love mixing in the perlite. It was just a little test I did um, and it works fine, but I don't know. Okay, so this is how wet it is. I hope you'll be able to tell. Like if you pinch it, some water comes out, but not like a ton. I think we're ready to go. And then you're gonna need some plant cuttings. So I took some plant cuttings and you'll see them on screen. I have them sitting in liquid or water and just like a tub because I took the cuttings and then kind of uh, forgot about them. I got busy doing something. And yeah, so we have some Skindapsis, Pictus Exotica that I'm going to be propagating, putting into a bin as well as some, let's see, a bunch of Syngonium. Okay, so like here is a Syngonium Angostatum. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven nodes. I'm going to go ahead and chop them up. Actually first, you know, I'm going to pull off the leaves. I know people get mad at me for this all the time. It's not like a popular thing, I guess. So the reason I, you totally don't have to pull off the leaves. The reason I like to is it leaves less where I have so many plants growing at one time, pulling off the leaf actually um, leaves less for me to like watch 
for, if that makes sense, like less to worry about. Like I don't have to worry about um, the leaf like molding or rotting off or I don't know, getting bugs. Like I just have to worry about the single little node. And it also makes it easier to see where the growth points, makes it easier to see where the growth points on each node are so that I'm not wasting space by putting nodes in to sphagnum moss that don't have like new auxiliary buds. Is that what they're called? Yeah, auxiliary buds, I'm pretty sure. That's why I do it. You totally don't have to do it. I know there's kind of a debate on it, but that's just what I do. Where this on the tip is just such a small leaf, I'm actually going to leave it. Okay, and now I'm just gonna cut each thing and I'm gonna cut them pretty small. So there's one node that we will be putting into a cup in our prop bin. So yeah, that is one of the questions I get asked a lot why I cut off or why I pull off the leaves. That is why it just makes it easier for me where I have so many going. But if you don't have as many going at one time, like less plants to focus on, then like, again, you totally don't have to do that. It's just kind of whatever your brain can handle and my brain cannot handle. <laughs> so that's why I do it. Um, but it's not, again, totally necessary. So if you're one of those people that has left me a hate comment about that, get a grip, you don't have to. I'm not trying to force anybody to do anything, okay? So this is, these are just little garbage, um, ah, garbage pieces that are too long to fit in the cup. So I'm just going to toss them. And here we are left with our little nodes. Look at them. They look so good, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I have my nodes sitting here. Now I'm going to take a cup, my little three ounce cup, because these are individual nodes. How many times am I going to say node in this video? Probably like a million, huh? Somebody keep count, would you? <laughs> so I'm going to take a little bit of sphagnum moss actually more than that. I'm going to fill up the cup really, but loosely. I don't actually like to pack it down too much because I do think that that is one of the ways you end up with like rot. And that is something people ask about in these, about these propagation boxes all the time, how I don't end up with rot. Because I know a lot of you have tried this and say that you ended up with mold or whatever. Um, there are a lot of different reasons for that. So one, if there's not enough airflow, not enough light, too much water, um, too high of humidity, and then also too compacted of sphagnum. So there are a lot of things that can cause it. You just kind of have to tweak what you're doing until you find like the right combination of moisture and light and um, like dampness in the sphagnum, uh, whatever, really everything, you know? So it's, it's like really hard to say because it is so situational depending on like your habits for you or what you prefer to do with your grow grow um, prop boxes. But yeah, that's that. those are like the main ways you're getting rot. And I would start, if, you're, if you've done a propagation box and you've ended up with mold or rot, I would definitely start by maybe airing out your box a little bit more. I mean, I open my bins once every week or so, at least once every week or so, sometimes twice a week. But I mean, I haven't touched these in a couple of weeks and they're doing just fine because I don't overly saturate or overly compact the cups and they are getting adequate lighting. If you are having a problem with that though, you could totally like drill holes into the tops of your bins for a little bit of extra airflow. Just keep in mind that you're gonna need to probably water them more frequently. That's why I don't like to have air holes on my bins because I can't keep up with watering if I do that. Here we have sphagnum in a cup and right here we have our node which has the growth point and I'm just gonna go ahead and like shimmy it on in there so that the roots are covered by sphagnum but like you can see it's kind of sticking up straight there so I just make it so that the new growth point is pointing like up. So the new growth point will grow up. So yeah, that's what I do for all the plants and it's really easy. Okay. I'm just going to get a few of them ready with this sphagnum so that I can just rapid fire pot them. Uh, something else I get asked a lot is if you can do soil in the propagate. Oh, I got some, whatever, some sphagnum on my face. If you can do soil in the bin and you totally can, um, I have tried that before though. And in my experience, again, we all, it really just depends, but I ended up with mold with the soil. That's the only time I've really ever gotten mold, actually maybe one other time. Um, and that was a weird situation anyway. Yeah. So I don't love doing it with soil. If you want to do soil or like have the nutrients of soil, again, you can wet the sphagnum with liquid dirt, which is what I choose to do. So they're still getting like nutrients or you can mix a little bit of like pre-bagged soil into your sphagnum moss. Like then your plant will get nutrients from the soil, but like the odds of raw are a little bit less. 
and it doesn't compact down as much as like straight soil does. Yeah, you could try that if you really wanna do the soil thing. And I also get asked about like, if I do just like straight perlite and I have tried to do prop bins with straight perlite and I do not like it. I have friends who have a lot of success and swear by the perlite, like the straight perlite prop bins or, you know, containers, but for some reason I just can't get it to work. Like I couldn't figure out the moisture of it. And um, that's just like, I think like a personality thing or a plant care habit thing, you know? So it might work for you. If you're somebody that struggles with sphagnum, you could try perlite, see how it goes. Or LECA, I've never really done LECA. I'm not really interested in trying it. It just seems like bulky and I don't know. It just seems like there's a lot to it for me. So I've, I've never really been interested in it, but you could try it. I'm sure it'd work great for some people who know what they're doing with LECA, but that's that's just not me. Okay, now we're gonna put our little, our little nodes in there. So cute. My favorite things to propagate in bins are Syngonium. They love it. They grow so fast. They just grow like so robust. They grow really quickly in the bins actually. They're the fastest growing by far, which is excellent because they're my favorite plants and I love cutting my plants and propagating them. Okay, I'm gonna take some more cuts because those are full. Um, these are cuts I took probably two weeks ago that I've just had sitting in water because I lost my mind, like I said. I just could not. And just again, I'm gonna cut them individually. The top cut, I'm going to leave. Oh, I should not have done that because there's not a root on here. Uh-oh, that was stupid of me. Oh well, um, this one has roots. <laughs> Why did I do that? Me dum dum. Everybody makes mistakes. I mean, I'm gonna put it in there still and hope it gets some roots, but probably not. So when you're taking your cuttings, um, make sure it's got roots because this one don't got no roots. And this is a, a modeled Syngonium. Some people call them army Syngonium. Wow, wow, ain't it pretty? It's a pretty little Syngonium. And yeah, I have one more cut on here. Actually, I could get two, but I don't trust myself because these scissors are a little bit tick. A little bit tick and it's hard to get cuts. Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna just put them in there like, oh, these ones have longer roots. So I'll show you what I do with like this kind of a thing. Um, if I wait too long to cut them and put them in cups, <laughs> this kind of a root, even like long-ish roots like this, you can still just shimmy on in there and they really don't have to be like totally in the sphagnum. You could really just like set them on top of the sphagnum and they will start to grow down, especially if they have enough moisture. So yeah, but just if they have like super long ones, I do it a little bit different. Well, I really hope this grows, although I'm, <laughs> I'm not thinking it's going to, but look how cute it is. Um, now I need to put them in the box, but I didn't really plan this out because I'm using the box as a table. Maybe I'm just gonna set these aside and I'll show you at the end. Meow, I'm just gonna go ahead and do all of the plants real quick. Get you up close and personal so you can see what I'm doing. A little better. Sometimes the cups get stuck together and it's kind of annoying. Okay, and then now for these ones that have like longer roots, um, I just have my cup. I'm gonna put a little bit of sphagnum at the very bottom, kind of pack that down, and then take the node I want to do, find where the no node is pointing up. So right there, hope you can see. Can you see? Pointing up, and I'm going to take some sphagnum moss and wrap it, wrap the roots around it, like, like this and plop it in there. Like, you see that? You see that? The roots are wrapped around at the bottom and it's kind of hard to show cause I really have to finesse and fine dyeing them in there. But yeah, and then just fill in around the node. And yeah, that's, that's that. And you can see the root is in there. 
wrapping around. I'll show you again. If you forget what the plants you've potted in them are, you could totally like label them, put just one kind in each bin. I was doing that for a while, but now I am kind of mixing them up, but I do keep like all my syngonium together. So I at least know if it's like a syngonium or a Hoya or a, you know, philodendron, whatever. You can label the cups or keep them all the same in the bin. Um, oh, and I will say the reason I started using the cups is the the roots, people have asked me, the roots of the plants when I just had like moss in the bottom were all tangling together. And that was fine when it was, you know, I was just like propagating for my own plants. But now that I am selling them, this is just a lot easier of a process because I can ship the full cup and it disrupts the plant less. So they tend to do better. That's why I started doing it this way. For these bigger <laughs> rooted ones, these are aerial roots from the cuts I took. And you can cut off the aerial root, like you can trim it shorter and it'll grow new ones. Actually, you know what? That's what I'm gonna do on one of them, on this one, cause it's a little bit wild. And I'm gonna use bigger cups for these ones, but still just put a little bit of sphagnum at the bottom and then wrap, wrap the cutting in it. Like this. Obviously with a little bit more cause we're using the five ounce cups now. I really hope this is helpful for you. Propagation bins are so <laughs> addictive. And then like once you get some plants growing, they grow so fast and then you get more cuttings and then they multiply super quickly. So that's why I like doing it this way. It really makes a good environment for plants to thrive. Okay, and then this one, I'm going to wrap the root like around my hand like this, like that, you see? Okay, so there's the node and I'm gonna put it in like this, I hope. Oh, is it focused? So like the roots are all tangled with each other, but they will grow and then wrap them in the mouse. Yes. So that the roots are just in a, like a little knot and I can just put it in the cup, fill in around. So it's really that easy. See that? And there's the root wrapped around itself. Can't really see it anywhere else, but there is root in there. Okay. So now for the actual like bin part of this, I'm just gonna put all of the cups in the bottom. Really, that's it. Self-explanatory, right? This plant, I'm gonna have to put it in a, a bigger bin cause it's too, too tall. So yeah, of course, give them good light. If you keep them just like in your house, I would keep them in a room no further away than like eight feet from a south window. In the winter, I would supplement with grow lights. That's what I did in my other room, but I have them in my grow tent where there's light coming from literally every direction, above, below, every direction. So yeah, I'll also link my favorite grow lights in the description box. They are the best ones I found um, for the most like reasonable price. So yeah, um, that is how I do my propagation bins. Oh, let me show you some of my syngonium bins. Oh gosh. Oh, here's one. Actually, here's one too. Okay. This is good. This is good. Oh, and then I can show you. So you can see there's a little bit of water down there at the bottom of the bin. I just add a little bit of water. If the moss is looking dry, um, if it gets any like drier than this, I'll go ahead and add a little bit of water, uh, liquid or water. Or if there's not condensation on the side of the box at any point of the day, I do check my bins twice a day when I turn on and off my grow lights. So if I'm not seeing any humidity around the outsides of the box, I know it's time to water. Um, on the flip side of that, if you're seeing this kind of condensation all day long, you definitely, well, you may wanna consider opening the box to let it air out because that's how you may end up with mold and rot and stuff. So these are some of my syngoniums. Look at how nice they're growing. These were all grown again by Node. Yeah, I mean, it does work. Cute little syngonium Albo. Here we have a syngonium Chia Pence, little cutie. Um, another Chia Pence, another cutie. And an Angus Statum, I believe this one is. Yeah, pretty sure. Might be a three king. We'll see when it gets bigger. So, oh, here's a little Winlandii. Cutie. Yeah, so that's how it works. <laughs> ah! And usually they will grow uh, roots before they start growing um, growth, like leaf, like plant. Here, I'll show you another one. This one has, oh, 
Did you just see that water just dripped all over me? Okay, so this one actually has other plants, has plants other than Syngonium in it. So like here, ooh, look at this. This is a uh, Begonia Sarawak. Actually, one of my favorite Begonias. I think it's so beautiful. So it's a little leaf propagation I did. There's the leaf I put in there to propagate it and it's growing like a charm. I also have a Melanobolata. This is like the spiky one that, yeah, it will get the little spiky chocolate chips at some point. Oh, this one's not doing, oh, that's actually doing pretty good. So there's like the leaf propagation I took and put in here and then the new leaves coming in. Another Melanobolata. Oh, here are a couple of Labesia species real props I did. These guys are so slow to root. So if you see these plants selling for more expensive, it's because they take forever to root and get growth. Um, so yeah, I mean, once they're like bigger than this, they'll start to grow a lot faster. Like my mature mother plant that I take all of my cuttings from grows really quickly. But when they're small like this, they just, it takes months and months. Like I've seriously been doing these for probably like five months. Um, okay. And then, yeah, there's just some more little syngonium. So these are syngonium confetti, single node props looking really good, little babies. Um, and yeah, that's how I do it. It's a lot of fun. 10 out of 10 recommend. I hope I've answered like most of the questions. I tried to answer the ones that I've been getting or hit the points that most people bring up when they're struggling with their prop bins. Let me know if there's anything I forgot. I'll do my best to answer what I can in the comments. I can't answer everything, unfortunately, but I will keep watch. And yeah, it's really fun, really rewarding, a really excellent way to bulk propagate plants if you wanna like sell from your collection. And you guys, let me just say, the more people that are willing to take cuttings and sell from their plants, especially their uncommon plants, um, the lower prices are gonna get. It's a supply and demand thing. So you know what? If, you, if you're somebody that complains about plant prices being way too high or you know, is, is a little bit upset that plant prices are so high right now, then consider cutting some of your own plants and selling them to saturate the market a little bit. You know, if we saturate the market, then plant prices will go down. For, sellers will be forced to lower their prices. So yeah, just keep that in mind. So highly recommend, great way to go about it. And it's a lot of fun. I thoroughly enjoy it. Oh, do you want to see another one? This is not in a prop bin, but I'm just going to show you. Look at this other little Monstera Oblique node I propped. Got its first little hole. Hopefully, hopefully the next leaf will get another hole. There's the next leaf. Oh, it's happening. It's happening. Okay. Okay, so everything I mentioned, all the products I use for my propagation bins will be linked down below. Again, you can get 25% off liquid with my code HarleyG underscore 25. 10 out of 10 recommend. Um, I hope I hope I covered everything. But again, if you have more questions, leave them down there. I'll do my best to respond to them. If you see a question and you know the answer to it, then please respond. Let's help each other out. <laughs> uh, that would be great. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.